Thank you. Therefore, it is now time for member statements. The member from Nepean Carlton. Thank you very much, Speaker. It's my pleasure to arise here in the Assembly today uh, to talk about hydro and, uh, and to talk about Ottawa Hydro in particular. Uh, this past uh, fall, my uh, colleague from the Ottawa City Council, Osgood Ward, George Deruz, uh, collected signatures, uh, thousands of signatures, asking for this Liberal government to take the lead on ensuring that Ottawa Hydro um, would assume Hydro One customers inside the City of Ottawa. Unfortunately, we received a response from the Minister that he's not prepared to do that. But Mr. Um, but Mr. Uh, Mr. DeRuz and I have been continually talking about this initiative, and tomorrow we will be working together in North Gore with uh, Councillor Scott Moffat on the high hydro prices that our constituents pay. And that will take place the Thursday, February 23rd, at the North Gore Community Centre, which is called the Alfred Ta Taylor Centre, 2300 uh, uh, North Gore uh, Community Way. And we will have energy expert Parker Gallant there, the Manatech BIA, and of course, Course, Ontario wind concerns will also be in attendance. Now, the members opposite may want to try and shut me down, Speaker, and they may want to heckle me, but I'll always stand up on behalf of the people of Nepean and Carlton and the high hydro rates that they are forced to pay because of that Liberal government. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from <laughs> Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. Earlier today, we in this House held a moment of silence on the passing of a great Canadian, Bob White. We honoured Bob White because of his enormous contributions to social justice and for his leadership within the Canadian labour movement. He dropped out of school when he was 15. He got a job in a furniture plant in Woodstock. He became a shop steward. And the president of his plants, United Auto Workers Local, and soon became an international UAW rep. And in 1978, the UAW's Canadian director. And that's when I first met him. He was in Windsor often in those days, in a city built on the auto industry. As reporters, we covered every word he said. Of course, <laughs> sometimes we had to bleep out some of those words. <laughs> I, I well remember the NFB's 1985 documentary, Final Offer, and the acrimonious split from the American Union leadership that followed that round of contract talks. The internal fight to form the Canadian Auto Workers uh, Union was not an easy one. Without Bob White, I doubt it could have happened back then. He was a visionary who made it easier for women, immigrants, and people of color to assume leadership roles. He went on to lead the Canadian Labour Congress. He was an officer of the Order of Canada. He had honor honorary university degrees from the University of Windsor, Toronto, York, and St. of X. I last saw Bob a few years ago tearing up the dance floor at a banquet in Windsor. I think it was for the Unemployed Help Centre. He was a hero to many of us, especially rank and file members and retirees, because he never forgot where he came from. I'm pleased to say we were friends. My condolences to his family and to all of those whose lives he touched over these many years. Thank you. The member is the member from Ottawa. Is up. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's Kindness Week in Ontario, and I was pleased to join uh, with my colleagues, the member from Ottawa Centre and the member from Ottawa West Nepean, at Akora Village last week when we launched Kindness Week. We were joined by the father and founder of Kindness Week, our friend Rabbi Reuven Volka, Jeff Turner from Kind Canada, and, and our host, the Caring and Sharing Exchange, and Mr. Speaker, many others, too many to mention. Kindness Week became official in Ontario in 2009, and this year is Kind Ottawa's 10th anniversary of encouraging people to choose to be kind. This year's theme is inclusivity. Last Saturday, last Saturday I was able to uh, attend a Community Appreciation Day at the Mosque of Mercy in my riding of Ottawa South. Tuesday morning there was a multi-faith welcoming committee at the Ottawa Airport. All week long, Canadian Blood Services hosted blood, uh, is hosting a blood donor clinic at the Carling Avenue location. World Changing Kids has launched a kindness petition. I was able to read it yesterday in the legislature. Great work, kids. Keep those petitions coming. 
There are many other events and acts of kindness, too many to mention, Mr. Speaker. And there are five ways of spreading kindness. Give, volunteer, say thanks, celebrate kindness, and pay it forward. Kindness can be as simple as a smile of acknowledgement, and that's something for all of us to think about. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member from Kitchener, Conestoga. Yes, uh, well, thank you, Speaker. While there's always plenty to celebrate at the Canadian International Auto Show, this year's O Canada theme takes it to a new level as our annual auto exhibition highlights truly Canadian contributions in recognition of our nation's 150th birthday. This fantastic event running through Sunday includes historical highlights such as Canada's first car, the 1867 Seth Taylor steam buggy. Speaker, you may have one of those in your shed there. Uh, the 1997 Williams that Canadian racing champion Jacques Villeneuve rode to victory will also be front and centre. Villeneuve remains the only Canadian to have, in fact, won the Formula One World Championship. From Jacques to Gilles and beyond, Canadian excellence in motorsport will be featured as the auto show rolls through 50 years of Grand Prix in Canada, featuring Formula One cars from the last half century, with over 1,000 cars and trucks on display, including some rare and exclusive exhibits, such as the Austin Martin AM RV001 hypercar. There is something for everyone. Our Ontario Provincial Police will be on hand to provide presentations on safe driving, offering test rides of police vehicles and demonstrations from emergency response teams. There's plenty for the kids as well, with Lego Batman on hand the rest of the week, while this holiday's weekend gave the family some space time with their favourite Star Wars Stormtrooper. It's always a great event, Speaker, and I encourage everyone to head down to the O Canada edition of the Canadian International Auto Show to see both the past and future of where our northern automotive dreams can take us. Thank you, Speaker. I'm not sure I think I represent that remark. <laughs> Member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. It is with a heavy heart that I pay tribute to former Oshawa Mayor and Councillor Nancy Diamond. She is survived by her daughter Susie and grandsons and the countless friends and neighbours she touched in our community. Nancy has been a tireless advocate, leader and defender of Oshawa. Our city has drawn from her strength and unwavering commitment for a generation. Nancy's passing is a loss to the broader community, but it is also a very personal loss to many. She was a woman of strength, humour, integrity, class and action. She woke up every morning determined to make the world a little better. She was committed to her work and was usually the last to leave City Hall each night. Nancy served as a dedicated volunteer and advocate for equality and fairness. She has been recognized for her contributions and action by many service organizations across the city. She was accessible and approachable and loved building authentic relationships with neighbours across the city. She valued the work she did, but even more valued the people she worked for. Across the 20 years as long-serving mayor, and city and regional councillor, Nancy knew our city inside and out and loved it. Nancy was a tireless worker for our community. She had the strength of her convictions and would not shy away from a fight worth having. The services to remember Nancy were wonderfully attended, and everyone had a personal memory to share. Most remembered her wisdom, kindnesses, keen wit, and signature smile. They called her a force of nature. Oshawa is a better and stronger community for Nancy Diamond's years of dedication and her lifetime of service. Her beloved Oshawa will miss her every day. Further members respond to the member from St. Catharines, Chief Government. Despite warnings from government agencies, the news media, national television programs such as CBC's Marketplace or CTV's W5 or Global's Consumer SOS, Residents of Ontario continue to be scammed by individuals who prey upon vulnerable people in an effort to persuade them to part with their hard-earned dollars. Whether by mail, telephone or door-to-door -door visits, trusting individuals are persuaded by hucksters and fraud artists using a variety of unscrupulous methods to send money or sign contracts that result in significant and unnecessary costs to their victims. The con artists often represent themselves as government officials and uh, demand to be let into a home to conduct an inspection or view a bill. They use bullying tactics to gain entry and promise the customer substantial savings by signing a contract, often for a new furnace, air conditioner, water heater, water purifier, or an appliance for a home. 
Some disguise themselves as Canada Revenue Agency employees, lawyers, or simply kind-hearted friends, and they persuade the victims to send money or sign a contract. Bill 59, uh, which uh, puts consumers first, could be used to restrict unsolicited door-to-door -door marketing contracts, including contracts for sectors that receive complaints. Although the legislation that we I've made reference to and previous bills have endeavoured to protect the consumer, people themselves should proceed with extreme caution and follow the old saying, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Just over a month ago, I was pleased to attend a meeting at the region of Halton headquarters with Regional Chair Gary Carr and some members of Regional Council and staff. We had a great discussion, and I resolved to bring some of their concerns to the floor of the Ontario Legislature at the earliest opportunity. So here we go. We urged the government to listen to Halton's recommendations in the Growth Plan, OMB Reform, and Conservation Authorities Review. We urged the government to assist Halton with long-term sustainable infrastructure funding including keeping commitments to Metrolinx improvements, and consider the necessary requirements Halton is seeking to fund their infrastructure priorities. We urge the government to ensure public health funding keeps up with growth and address the long-standing ambulance offloading problem. We urge the government to favorably consider Halton's needs for affordable housing, child care spaces, and long-term care in the context of any provincial funding decisions for these vital services. We urge the government to consult Halton on the Greater Golden Horseshoe Transportation Plan and ensure the capacity of the 401 and the QEW is upgraded to manage growth. We urge the government to develop an effective provincial agriculture strategy and help improve access to broadband internet. I'm aware that the regional chair, council and staff seek a productive partnership with the government of Ontario, and we want to work together to accomplish shared goals in the best interests of our residents. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Other member statements. A member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. And today I rise to bring awareness and to celebrate Canada's largest youth shelter, Covenant House Toronto. February is Covenant House Awareness Month, and this February, 20, the second, Covenant House reached a tremendous milestone. They are now celebrating the 35th year of changing the lives of homeless, at-risk, and trafficked youth. They provide 24-7 care to youth in need and serve as many as 250 youth in a single day. Based out of MPP Murray's Great Riding of Toronto Centre, Covenant House is the country's largest homeless youth agency and provides a wide range of services including crisis centre, mental health programs, transitional housing services, job training programs, and an on-site health centre offering compassionate care to heal the physical and psychological tolls of the street. And Covenant House vision is to lead change that challenges homeless youth to pursue a life of opportunity. So I'd like to take this opportunity to share a few grim statistics. As many as 1,500 to 2,000 homeless youth are on Toronto streets at a given night. 65% of homeless youth have failed to complete high school. Abuse and neglect are some of the major reasons why youth leave home, and some 30% of homeless youth have been involved in some form of the sex trade. So Covenant House has offered opportunity and hope to over 90,000 young people in their 35 years. And to do this, the agency relies on donors for about 80% of its budget. So I encourage all those watching at home to go to covenanthousetoronto.ca and donate today. And I'd like to extend a big congratulations to the tremendous work that Covenant House does to troubled youth to find a better path in life. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member of Statements, the member from Dufferin Calvary. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize the launch of Soup Sisters in Dufferin Caledon. As part of a larger, nationally growing nonprofit soup making organization, Soup Sisters and Brock Brothers initially launched in 2009 in Calgary, and they've made over 100,000 bowls of soup for more than 9,500 volunteers. Now, three volunteers from my community have launched Soup Sisters in Dufferin Caledon. Bringing Soup Sisters into the community was the idea of Lori Robertshaw and the owners of Lavender Blue Catering, Terry Dole and Vanessa Cruiser, who are looking for a creative way to support Family Transition Place. Through Soup Sisters, participants will be learning how to make nutritional, 
home-based soups with the assistance of a chef, facilitator, and family transition place will benefit by receiving a month's supply of nutritious soups made from scratch. Dufferin Caledon is a strong community because it has innovative, industrious, and caring volunteers like Lori, Terry, and Vanessa. Volunteers who see a need, roll up their sleeves, or in this case, put on an apron, and invite the rest of the community to get involved. On behalf of all Dufferin Caledon residents and the Ontario Legislature, I'd like to congratulate Terry, Lori, and Vanessa and invite residents in Dufferin Caledon to become involved with the Orangeville chapter of Soup Sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements.